Call in. There we can, go. Can you hear me? I hear you clear. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Conversations. We've got the dynamic duo. You know what I'm saying? We've got my man Skid. Yeah. See how it's the grouch. <laughs> how are you gentlemen feeling this evening? Good, good. How about good, yourself? Good, 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 good. Oh, man, you know, I'm just living this Ohio dream. You know, out here in Ohio, rainy day. It's been raining in L.A., bro. I mean, believe it or not, they say it don't rain in Southern California, but we've been getting floods and floods of rain, bro. That shit ain't no joke <laughs> out here, bro. Okay. Yeah, it's been really wet out here. That's crazy. Hey, can't do too much about the weather. All right, I'm going to start out with you. Uh, let's start with Skid. Tell me about your, your introduction into the music. Into music. Uh, introduction into music, uh, well, first, as a youngin, when I was growing up, uh, I was just automatically gravitated to music because uh, – I just loved it. I just fell in love with music, bro. Um, it spoke to me, you know, uh, 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 being a man of God, you know, God is all about creation, bro. And our job is to kind of uh, try to be as much like God as possible, right? So in that sense, like, it's on us to create. And uh, loving music, that was like what I knew how to create from a young age, whether it be put, putting words together, putting notes together, uh so uh yeah just from a very young age that was my introduction um i just even five six years old i used to get on my tape recorder and, and record uh whatever i could um and uh being from la of course hip-hop was the music that was popping and and uh just big out here so you know i was in the scene and always uh just gravitated towards that bro and uh from there you know it just uh kind of snowballed into uh what it is now what what would you say was one uh some of your uh biggest hip hop influences? Well, growing up and like I said in L.A., it was uh I grew up in the '90s, so it was G Funk, Snoop, Dre, uh, Daz, Corrupt, uh, the whole Dog Pound Click. Uh, just gravitated more towards that camp, the Death Row camp, Pac, um, just West Coast uh, G Funk hip hop, bro. And of course, uh, beyond that, you know, got to give love to the East. I love Biggie, um, Nas, all the goats, bro. Just don't, really don't, all the goats. Don't forget Bone. Don't forget Bone. Bone. I know you're from Cleveland, so of course, Bone was a huge influence, bro. Like, uh, shit, yeah, man. Just all the good stuff that we all love. No doubt. Now, at what point did you really start taking it serious? Uh, uh I mean, I kind of had a. Two two different uh, spurts. So my when I first really started making music seriously was around like uh, 2011, 2010. Uh, was with a clique called LA's Most Blunted, hence the moniker of my my uh, my handle for IG, LA's Most Blunted. Uh, LAMB. We went by LAMB. We put out an album. Um, and really, yeah, back back then is when I first took music seriously, production and all that. Put out an album. Um, you know, it went all right. We did a track with uh, X-Rated. We had some production from Snoop on that album. Um, and it was cool. You know, I liked we. It was a dope little album and whatnot. But there was a lot of ego and shit involved with the click and all that. You know how music goes, bro. So that kind of soured me from everything. I kind of had to take a step away from music. Um, and Siavash actually is the one who brought me back in on the second spurt. Uh, Siavash. Chats off to him. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing. He he told me, yo, I'm connecting with some uh, OGs. I, um, I want to do an album with Fat Lip. Um, can you come and join? And, and I want to get you back in music. So I was like, all right, yeah, you know what? If I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it big. This time I'm going to take it uh, even more serious. And and uh, that was my second spurt, which is right now, uh, doing uh, Fat Lip's album and the Far Side Reunion. And then um, next we're doing actually RBX's album. So we got some things coming as well. It's, uh, but, yeah, that was my uh, my introduction and my uh, first and second spurt, so to speak. Yeah. And uh, it's uh, Siavis, right? Siavis. 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 All right, how, how did you do it? Siavis. How did, how did you Like after you smoke a blunt, you, you end up in a sea of ash. <laughs> okay. Sea of ash. 
No doubt. That's right. How did you get into the, into the music, and what were some of your musical influences? Uh, I would say uh, at the top is probably Dr. Dre. Uh, me and Skid, we both look up to Dre. He, we feel like he's the number one producer in the game. Um, and then, of course, Snoop, NWA, <laughs> all those guys, uh, Ice Cube, uh, Easy E, um, Bone Thugs in Harmony. Uh, let's see, Notorious B.I.G., definitely one of my favorites. Uh, Nas, uh, Scarface, UGK. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, man, uh, Outkast, you know. Uh, all, all the real legends, all the real legends. Okay, and, and you're originally from the Midwest, right? No, uh, we're both from California. We're both from oh, okay. LA, LA. Yeah. Okay, you, you just, and, and we, just real cool, we, right? What's that? I see you, you repping Bone. <laughs> oh, that, that's because oh, I yeah, love yeah. Bone, man. And, and, and Bone Thugs, they really had a West Coast sound because, you know, Easy e signed them. And they had DJ Unique, who was from the West Coast, producing their albums. So when you listen to their albums, they really had a West Coast flavor and sound to their albums. And they brought mm -hmm. that whole chopping and melodic and harmony and like, yeah, man, I just, they're, they're my all time favorite group, Bone Thugs. That's what's up. They, you know, uh, Cleveland's just like 45 minutes north from where I'm at. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, beyond that, beyond that, we're actually working on a on a Bone Thugs uh, little reunion joint as well. That's in the works as well. So I mean, we got some shit with Bone coming up. Um, that's where that connection is at. Beyond just uh, you know, fandom. Of course, we're huge fans, but we we do got some shit with Bone as well. Yeah, oh. I, I've actually uh, I met Bone Thugs and Harmony when I was very young. I, I went to one of their concerts when I was like, I don't know, seventeen, eighteen. And uh, they were really cool. Like, I was like, you know, I got some weed if you guys want to smoke. And they were like, oh, just, yeah, all right, come on, on the bus real quick. And Lazy just rolled a blunt right there. And, and me, Lazy, Wish, and Crazy, we all smoked. And uh, later on, as I got older and started making music, I hit them up. And I was like, hey, like, like I want to collab and stuff. So we, we have a lot of unreleased tracks with uh, Crazy lazy busy um and and most of those are going to be on skits uh solo album that we're uh currently working on and uh we actually got a track with a uh, west side boogie too that i'm very mm. excited about so i mean I, we got a lot of stuff coming for you guys that's what's up man Cra crazy bone real cool dude i did an interview with him a while ago real good dude man Oh, now, yeah. crazy, crazy is a really good dude. He's a, he's a man of his word. Crazy. He's a man of his word. Yes, yes. Now, I, I, like, what what's the chemistry between you guys? Because, you know, kind of compare you like Jimmy Jam, Terry Lewis. What, what would you say y'all's chemistry is? Yeah, so, uh, I mean, we, we go way back, bro. Uh, 20, I say like 20 uh, plus years back. Uh, we first met on on a, actually we connected on this website uh, called Dub CC. It was a West Coast uh, hip hop website, uh, and we networked there uh, back in what was it like two thousand one, two thousand two, and uh, from there we we uh, Dub I think we met up at Shout out to Dub, Dub CC. CC, yeah, I'm actually the admin over there right now. It's not really it's on its last legs and whatnot, but uh, hey, yeah, hey, uh, shout hey, out don't to say Dub that, CC. Bro. Don't say that, bro. <laughs> we trying to get we getting it back we getting it back we getting it back but uh yeah bro uh that's where we, we uh first uh you know met and then uh, i guess we met up at a concert and um what was it the uh, which concert was it powerhouse powerhouse yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, so bone had, like, all the was actually there bone bone was, was there. there all the yeah. legends all the legends that we speaking of right now was there and um yeah we just connected we we hit it off and whatnot and we started uh we wasn't doing music originally we was just uh, homies you know just kicking it at one night um and then i started doing the music thing with la's most blunted as i was telling you um and then uh yeah eventually we ended up uh doing music through, uh, in 2000 
2019 is when we started doing music together. Not that, uh, mm. not that, not that uh, pretty recently, not that far back. Shout out to Ali, I see you. I see you there. All right, now, you know, this is, um, a lot of people are doing like the, the 50th, you know, anniversary of hip hop. What, what's been your take of, of, the, of hip hop from when you was introduced to it up until now? So yeah, like I like I was chopping it up with you earlier uh, about. I just think it's very much a shame the way the the how the game has kind of uh, gone away from the entire culture. There's like really no more culture, right? It's just put out a track, put out a single, and it doesn't have that real live energy in it like it did back when we were growing up. And I sound like an old head, like everybody, you know, but that's really what it is, bro. Like it's just dying out to where uh it's just a shame man and it's uh it doesn't have that energy but there's some there's some cats out there that still you know are dope like west side boogie uh you know kendrick of course uh dom kennedy yeah yeah know. yeah no that's not a slight to the individual artist at all don't get me wrong the artist there's a lot of dope artists it's just as a culture it's right. just different from what it was you know you know what i'm saying i mean uh yeah it's just the energy, bro. It's, it's lacking that energy. And how, how would you say the West Coast scene is as far as the new generation? The West Coast, uh, as far as the, what do you mean? Like what's the uh, like like some of the the the, the younger and up and coming cast like that that you would probably put up under Kendrick Lamar, who's just just trying to bubble. Like like what's what's the scene and what's the vibe like? I mean, right now, like like we said, the game is just so much different than it was back in the day. Like, you could just put out, anybody could just put out a single on Spotify and, and you know, try to push it. And uh, so so really, it's kind of hard. The lines have been blurred as to who's, like, a really artist and who's just doing this just to come up and, you know, who's really about their art. So, I mean, uh, but from, from the real ones, like we said, West Side Boogie and, like you said, Kendrick and, and um, there's... there's there's some names out there that are still really about the music. Uh, it's just, it's just, Dom, Dom Kennedy. Yeah, Dom Kennedy. I think by now he's considered old school. Larry June. Larry June is dope. Larry June, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's some names, bro. Uh, but, um, yeah, overall, it's just uh, the game has gone in a different direction, and we're kind of trying to bring that authenticity back to the music to where, um, you know, albums are fully produced by one producer like we had back in our day. It had a cohesive sound. It wasn't just a bunch of tracks thrown together. Um, and that's that's what we're going for, bro. And what we're, we're doing, I mean, we're putting our heart into really bringing that back. And, and, and to answer, you know, uh, answer uh, what, what you asked earlier, like what kind of dy dynamic do we have, me and Skip together? I would say a good comparison is maybe like 3-6 Mafia. You, you got Juicy J and DJ Paul, where they're both producers. And they're, you know, they, they're both kind of like doing everything. So, yeah, so we, we work together uh, on all the tracks. And, okay. you know, I'll, I'll bring something to him and he'll, he'll add something on top of it and, and you know, uh, mix it down, perfect it and, and structure it and, and add new melodies. And just, you know, it's like kind of like how uh, I said I was talking to him before saying like, you know how like Daz has like you know different collaborators, like Daz and Superfly, or mm. Daz and DJ Quick. You know, like all on All Eyes on Me on Pac's album, <laughs> so, something something like that. I would say. Okay, no doubt. Now let's talk about this right here. I want to know what brought that to life. Where, where oh, did where did it start at? If if you knew the uh, the entirety of what went into this album, I mean, I I could I could do a, a three day segment on this shit. Um, <laughs> it, it's that's a loaded question because it took a lot a lot to to put that that album together, real talk, and um, good and bad. If you feel yeah. where I'm coming from, yeah. Um, but yeah, we, we really we we I think I told you this on uh, on IG. We really. Uh, uh, we attacked each track as its own project. Like we put, you know, e even just 
listen to the beat, we put like so much time and effort into every beat. Then once the beat was ready, we're like, all right, now it's ready. Now it's ready to be a track. Each one was its own project. Uh, and I don't know if you could hear that in the music, but we put a lot of really a lot of heart and soul into each track. And I think yeah. that's what uh, that's what made it what it was. You feel me? Cause I'm, I'm telling you, man, I, I was digging the whole groove of it. Like it has a nice groove to it. You, you know what I'm saying? Like like you, people are like, well, what's the groove? I like the groove. You can just feel it. Right. It's you know like, what I'm saying? Like, like I was telling you earlier, right? And music is like energy, right? So the more energy you put into music, the more the, the, the listener is going to feel the energy in it. It's not just putting notes together. It's what you actually put in it from, an, from a spiritual perspective. And we really attacked each track from that perspective. Um, and, um, yeah, I mean, it's up to, to the listener to decide, but we put our all into it, bro. So, so, so how did you bring everybody together for this? Because it's, it's kind of like a far side reunion joint. Like, like, go through the process a little bit. All right, so that that one was the one I was talking about was uh, took a lot of orchestration um, and had to jump through a lot of ho hoops to get that, uh, to, to put that together. Um, so we, initially, we gave the beat to Fat Lip, and um, Fat Lip uh, was digging the beat. We told him, yo, we want to make a track called My Bad on this, uh, and then... After we heard, we kept hearing the beat. We're like, you know what? This might be a far side track. This sounds like a far side joint. Like it has that far side vibe to it. And that's when we started hitting up all the other guys. We're like, yo, we need y'all on this track. Uh, we got all the guys on it. Then uh, Booty was the tough one to crack because Booty. I don't know if you know, he has beef with the other guys. He's uh, he's not fucking with them at all. Okay. So uh, eventually, we we got him on the track, and um, and yeah, it came together. Uh, Took 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 a little bit, but we got it. We got it there. What what was what would you say was like one of the illest studio sessions you had putting that uh, project together? The illest studio session. Yeah, uh, like the, the I, most I, I really uh, enjoyed working on the energy track because I remember when we worked on that track, we were both like, "Man, let's be. This is." probably one of the sickest ones we've made and oh, yeah. yeah that that beat we were just like i don't know it had it had like you know when we laid down those synths on top of that uh isley brothers sample and of course we're big ugk <laughs> fans so uh shout out to pimp c bun b ugk um yeah man so like i don't know i think we we were all really feeling that energy joint and, and of course lit he he was feeling it too and he he did his thing and um yeah man I, yeah you can you can hear it you can hear that what was siavash to piggyback on what siavash is saying you can hear it in the track if you hear the chorus of energy uh we're just smoking blunts and just fucking around in the background and that's all in that track um yeah. you know i'm like Yo, Sea of Ash, that's a wonderful blunt you rolled right there. You know, shit like that. It, it's all in the track. We didn't touch it at all. We just left it all there. And that's why it's called energy. Like, all that energy is really in there. Wow. That, that, that's, that's, that's amazing. Was, was there any, like, was there any um, moments of doubt? Be like, man, I don't know if we're going to be able to pull this off or, or get it off the ground properly? Well, I mean, to be completely honest with you, Fat Lip isn't the easiest person to work with. Uh, he, he, he uh, yeah, I, I, I don't even know where to start, honestly. <laughs> he, he, mean, he means well. He means well. And he's, uh, you know, he means well. Shout out to um, Mike. But, uh, yeah, it's, uh, there was, like I said, there was a lot of hoops that we had to jump through to get everything right. But as is with most music, you know, it, it's not always an easy process. But uh, yeah, man. Um, yeah, I mean, I never had doubts. To be honest with you, I always had confidence in the project from the beginning. Um, but yeah, there was a lot of hoops we had to jump through. Okay. And what what what's the main thing you you want people to know about this project? Uh, uh that we really, really put our all into it, and and we want to give y'all real music, the real the real shit that the game's been missing. Yeah, we, we really spent we a lot of time on each track. Uh, 
it took us like about two years to complete that album, I would say, or around two years. And uh, we got it mastered by uh, Brian Big Bass Gardner, shout out to him. Uh, same same dude who uh, mastered Dr. Dre's 2001 album. A lot of classics, all the Snoop stuff. All the, and, uh, all the classics it. that we, yeah, yeah, we, wanted to do, we wanted to do a big. So we said, if we're going to get this master, we got to get this master by the best. And that's Brian Big Bass Gardner. Shout out to him. He's he's incredible. Um like he, like Siavar said, he did all the like literally damn near all the classics that we grew up on. Um, he mastered all that shit, so we had to get Brian on that. And uh, yeah, man, it was a uh, it was a lot. It was a lot that went into it. And, and what do you have coming on coming up next that you're working on? Oh, there Tell we go. Well, there we go. So I'm really excited about the stuff we got coming up. Uh, first off, we got RBX's album. Uh, we're mixing that right now. I uh, got a few more joints to finish mixing, and then we got to get it mastered, of course, by Big Bass. Um, but yeah, man, this album is just is loaded. It's, it, it's gonna. If you thought Torpor was dope, this is gonna blow that out of the water. Production is is another step higher, um, and, and we got cra Crazy Bone on there. We got Spice One, shout out to Spice One. Um, uh, MC8. MC8, another yeah, uh, legend, another right. legend. I forgot to mention him in, in, in my uh, artist that, that I'm influenced by, uh, MC8, of course, how could I forget? Uh, we got Butch Cassidy on there. Um, mm. Yeah, we we got a lot of big ones coming, Rass coming Cass. up. Rass Rass Cass, Cass. Project, oh. Project Pat. Um, Project Pat. Pat, Project Pat. This is like a big comeback album for RBX. Uh, if if anyone is not familiar with RBX, he's a contributor. He was on Death Row back in the OG days. He's a contributor to the Chronic, uh, Doggy Style. He's on a, on a, the Marshall Mathers LP. Um, a co-founder of DPG. I'm sure everybody knows who DPG is. Uh, but he really deserves that that big album, and that's what we're trying to give him with the. Uh, with it's called Hibernation Shivers. That's the title of the album. Uh, yeah, Dad, 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 Dad's Dillinger on there from the Dog Pound. Dad's Dillinger. Yeah, we got a bunch of good shit on there. But yeah, back to Hibernation Shivers. So he's kind of in hibernation right now, right? He's yeah. coming out of hibernation. And when you come out of hibernation, what do you get? You get the shivers. That's something that I guess he. We 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 had the whole theme kind of like with torpor. Torpor mm -hmm. means also like coming out of hibern or. A state of hibernation so we're kind of running with that theme of uh, waking up all these ogs and, and bringing back life into them and giving them the album that they deserve so that's what uh hibernation shivers is for rbx is this come back to the game and uh yeah we like see said we're, we're trying to up the ante and take it a step further and really uh give give each track what it deserves each note what it's de what it deserves each each everything it, it's utmost. Uh, try to put the most into every Shout single out bar, to Josh, every single drywall. Word. That that's what drywall. What's up, bro? You know, we, we need these legends to come back. Like, shout out to my man Al Scratch. He he just tapped in with us. You know what I'm saying? And and like when me and him was talking, it's a lane for this. I I, I call it you know grown man hip hop. You know, we didn't grew up. Yeah. And we still want to hear hip hop and. The the young stuff ain't for us. It's cool, but it ain't for us. And plus, I think the 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 and I hate saying old heads, but the veterans need to continue to set an example of what hip hop is. Because I think a lot of people get confused between just rap and hip hop, and like how we was talking about understanding the culture of it. You know what I'm saying? Not just rolling out of bed dropping something just, just understand what you're doing you know and, and pay your respects to the guys who who set the table cook the food and put your plate in front of you that's a big word right there respect and i think you hit you hit the nail on the head because that's what a lot of uh of the youngsters are missing in the game is respect like shout they don't really david look wolf. <laughs> shout out david wolf we had a good chat today bro uh but yeah uh respect is really missing from the game bro it's uh 
these youngsters, they don't look at their predecessors and be like, you know, we, we really got to give it up to them and pay our respects to them. We could just, you know, f they're old, fuck them. We don't need that, all that old head shit. And with that, that energy in the, in the music is just shit. And that's, it's just, uh, it's all bad, bro. It's all bad. Yo, so oh, we're trying to bring to back Abdul, those. Abdul in the house. But yeah, yeah uh, to, to, expand, to, to expand on that. Um, yeah, man, I, I, I feel like, in hip hop, we don't really give the OGs the respect they deserve. You know, like people like all the people from the 80s, like KRS and Slick Rick and Rakim and LL Cool J and all those guys, man. Like, you know, they they deserve way more respect. Uh, Pimp C, um, all all those guys. Man. Yeah, you like, you ask you ask the youngsters about that shit nowadays. They'd be like, oh, that old shit. Oh, fuck yeah. that old head. We don't need that old head shit. But yeah, you don't see that in, in, in these other you me? genres, you know? No, like, no you don't. You don't. Because, you like, like you, you take cast us in the rock and roll, man. They, they, you got newer generations still going to see the old acts. <laughs> yeah. 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 You, you look at, uh, like, uh, you know, in rock, you still got these rock bands touring when they're like 60, 70 years old and they're still selling out stadiums. Uh, yeah, I, I'll give you an example. If, if Rolling Stone put out an album, you know, tomorrow, that shit's going platinum, you know, the first week. And now if KRS, yeah. put, if Rakim put out an album, what is that doing? You feel me? Like, where's the respect? You know, like, we got to bring that respect back to the game, bro. Cool, cool and, G uh, rap. Uh, Cool G rap another legend that doesn't get the respect he deserves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. We're trying to do some shit. We, we we about to do some shit with Cool G as well. We're trying to put him back out there. Yeah, uh, respect cool, cool G, cool G goals, man. One of the goals. Much love to Cool G. Oh, word, Cool G. Okay, man, that's 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 that'd be really crazy. Cause like you say, he he don't really get his props like he should, and and he he's one of the illest. Like when I when I'm be seeing certain cats and he's I mean, so-called lists, like, they don't even be ranked. And I'll be like, what's people thinking about? <laughs> it's it's disrespectful, man. Like, I think Billboard just did a list of, like, the top 50 rappers or something. And they put Ice Cube at, like, 18? Are you kidding me? Ice Cube <laughs> at 18? That's just... Yeah, they put, like, Nicki Minaj ahead of Ice Cube. Like, Nicki Minaj can rap, don't get me wrong. She can rap, but come on. Cube? Ahead of Cube? Yeah. Yeah, no, but what can you do? Yeah, you know, we, we don't really, you know, we, well, you know, they, they, they have their narrative that they're really trying to uh, push. And, you know, a lot of times they, they probably try to just base it on sales and whatnot. But at the end of the day, man, we got to get back to focusing on the, the, the artistry. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, like the, the skills, the, the originality. Because, you know, that was the thing. You know, all right, if this person is rhyming like this, then I need my own style. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, and I think the game is missing a lot of style. Exactly. Right? Yeah, everyone was just kind of like sounding the same. Yeah. You know? And and then I feel like in the eighties and nineties, like everyone sounded different. Like my guy right there just said Chuck D. Like you know, he sounded different than LL. He sounded different than Rockin. Like yeah, you know, everyone had their own style. Like Outkast sounded different. You know, uh, uh, Scarface sounded different. You know, uh, Nas sounded different. You know, all, all Wu Tang sounded different. Uh, all these different groups, like, they brought something different to the table. Now it's like everyone's kind of just blending together, just trying to get, get that, you know, radio sound or whatever you want to call it. it it's yeah. more about the money than the art. That's what uh, the whole said right there. Yeah. That's real. real. Is, there, is there, like, a, a dream project you guys would like to do, like, a certain artist, like, like a dream project? that you would just love to do? Uh, for me, uh, one of them has already come true, which is collaborating with uh, Bone Thugs. 
But uh, as far as anyone else out there, I would say collabing with Dre and Snoop. Dre and Snoop, man. Like, Dre, Snoop, and Cube. Dre, Snoop, and Cube. I would say probably them. And then uh, I'm a big fan of Dell the Punky Homo Sapien as well. I feel like he's one of the best lyricists. I love his style, the way his flow, his charisma, like the stuff he talks about, you know, and for those of you that don't know out there, Del the Funky Homo Sapien is Ice Cube's cousin from Oakland. Um, shout out to Oakland, <laughs> all, all the great rappers from Oakland. Too short, you know. Um, yeah, man. Um, yeah, Auto Tune. Auto Tune is just. <laughs> it, it, it was cool, like, for a little bit when. It was just like one or two rappers doing it. Like it was yeah, Lil Wayne it. and T Pain, and you're like, okay, I could de I could deal with that. Rapping Forte, man, rapping Forte, yeah, I love Forte. Um, but yeah, so now now it's just oversaturated. Every track is auto tune, and you know, every track has those hi hats and like. When 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 uh, you remember when Juvenile came with back that ass up, I was yeah. like, oh sh shit, Manny Fresh is like he's giving it that bounce sound with the hi hats and everything. You're like, okay, yeah, okay, this is be different. Beyond, beyond just the, the auto tune, it's not just auto tune. Auto tune is is part of it, but it's just mechanical. Everything is mechanical, and, and um, just has no real soul in it. It's just shit thrown together just just for the sake of throwing oh, shit nice. together it, it, it's mechanical mechanical it's not authentic it's not real it's not something that they really put out with real intention from the heart it's just oh, i love the loony man yuck yuck mouth shit. that's what's up <laughs> now what advice would you have for some of these these young cats that's trying to get into game. Go, uh, listen, to some, go listen to some Mac Dre. I would, that's what I would tell them. Get, get some game from the legend. <laughs> you know, me and Mac Dre have the same birthday, so you know, we we share some uh, some of that game. See, of Ash wasn't always the biggest Mac Dre fan, but uh, eventually <laughs> he he realized he realized. You know what? We got the same birthday. We got a lot of the same. Uh, sense of humor. I don't know if y'all know Mac Dre had like a real authentic sense of humor and, and um rawness and realness to his raps. So yeah, like if you if you can't if you can't feel Mac Dre and where he's coming from, then um I don't think you can feel well where we're coming from. Off top, off top. Brother Lynch, oh man. When I was in high school that was my shit, bro. Brother Lynch. That's so Sacramento. LA's most when when I was doing I was talking earlier about LA's most blunted, the stuff we were doing way back. Um, back in those days, actually, I was a big, I was really, we were all really influenced by Brother Lynch. So we were doing a lot of horrorcore type of like rip gut, you know, cannibalistic type of raps, shock rap. Um, mm -hmm. And that's what we were doing back then. So yeah, big shout out to Brother Lynch. Uh, still, he's one of the greatest. When he was in his prime, bar for bar, he could out bar pretty much anyone uh, in hip hop history. Shout out to the homie KK, second to none. They just got a new album. Oh, mm. yeah. is not the biggest fan of Sebo, though. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll be honest, man. My, my cousin Ali, who's up in here right now, he got me into Sebo more over the years. Uh, but, yeah. had, to, had to put you in, huh? Yeah. I, got I, was tell, I was telling, I was telling, uh, see if I Sebo, I mean, really, like, he he's one of those who has that authentic raw passion in his raps. It's not about the bars per se, but more so about hey, this guy could like really make you feel what he's spitting. Right. And that's everybody like we were like Steve Ash was saying earlier, everybody had their own original style. So not everybody had to have bars and not everybody had to have melody. Right. You either had you could have had the total package, but some rappers were more about uh just making you feel what they're spitting through energy and some were more about technicality like putting words together and some were about flow like riding the beat you had each and every one um but yeah Sibo is one that hits you with that passion kind of like Pac not on Pac's level but with that same kind of passion nobody's on Pac's level so rest of them go that's who, the go Pac's, Pac's our go who, who would you say is probably like uh one of the most 
underrated legends to come off the West Coast? Mac Dre. Mac Dre. Uh, Mac Dre. Trey D. Uh, Trey D. Uh, Sugar Free. A Sugar Free, man. Like, that guy gets no love. Uh, Richie Rich, Selly Sell. That's right. That's right. Um, a lot of the Bay, man. I feel like the Bay doesn't get any love. You know, uh, me and Skip, we're both big Bay heads. You know, we, we got a lot of love for the Bay Area. Uh, Spice One. Yeah, you better Spice believe one. Spice One. We got Spice One on the RBX album. I'm, I'm um, I'm actually working on 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 uh, we're working on a Spice One track as we speak. Spice One RBX. Ooh. Uh, Drew down. That's what. Yep, yep, yep. Drew down. No doubt about it. Drew down. So, Drew down. Drew down. They say the baby don't really get the the proper time. It is is there any particular reason why you I'm think that is? Why the bay don't get love? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't that think it's just the Bay. Yeah. I think I think uh I think it's the West Coast in general. I think the West Coast in general uh don't get no love, and I think that's because uh hip hop started out east, and the East Coast publications really um didn't want to play. I mean, we all know this shit. They they never really uh, gave love to the West Coast the way the West Coast deserved, and it's going on till even today. Yeah, even today, even at the source the source awards, Snoop went up there and said it, man. It's been like that. Yeah, but beyond. Beyond that, I mean, even look at uh, the Grammys, right? The Grammys had, like, that whole hip-hop, uh, 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 what was it, anniversary of hip-hop, right? Yeah. And then they had, what was it, like, 99% East Coast acts? You feel oh, me? Like, where yeah. was, who do they no, have? No the exhibit. No they didn't have exhibit. nobody, not, not even exhibit. Like, even the people you would expect, like Snoop, or but nobody, really. Who do they have from the West? It was all East Coast MCs. So, again, till this very day, the West Coast doesn't get the love and the props it deserves. Uh, just because New York is on that whole protecting the culture shit, like oh, this is where it started, and you know you get, I don't know, bro, I, I don't know what it is, but we've always gotten that vibe. And mu much respect to the, all the East Coast OGs. Don't get me wrong, like we love the East Coast, uh, but it is what it is, bro. It, it's really not from the artists; it's more from the publications and and the the, the gatekeepers, as you would call it. Yeah, cause cause I I really miss that that era of hip hop to where. It was it was heavy East Coast. It was strong West Coast. You had down South. You had Midwest. It was like a, a, a cornucopia of hip hop. Like you could get a little bit of everything, and like you knew where they was from. You know what I'm saying? Like okay, you knew yeah. what it is. Yeah, there that's, you go. That sounds like some West Coast yeah. shit. That sounds like some no down South shit. Sound. That's a yeah, but it's like, it's like now you you had this add water and stir. Sound exactly, exactly. <laughs> there's no, bro. there's absolutely no regional sound. Regional sound is just missing from the game. You cannot determine where anything is from, and that's part of what I was speaking about. There's no energy in the music, so energy is is where you're actually at. Is the region that you're at? You 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 you're harnessing the energy from that region and putting it into the music, right? So if, yeah. if you're from the West Coast, you're feeling a West Coast energy, and you're able to put that in the music. But since there's no energy in the music. Then there's no regional sound. The regional sound is missing. So it's it's uh it's it's part of what we were talking about. Like the game has gone into a different direction, and that that's a big part of it. What you just Cause, cause, mentioned. Because I love when 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 I can you know know I right, like like they're telling us about what's going on where they're at, and I could feel it. They they giving me the you know kind of like taking me on a real tour. Like, okay, so that's how they doing it in the Oakland. Okay, that's the vibe. That's the sound. That's the look. You know what I'm saying? Okay, Atlanta, all right, I see y'all. All right, that's how y'all getting it. There's none of that anymore. Because there's no energy in the music. So how are they going to put the energy from their region in the music if there's no energy in the music to begin with? You feel me? Like, where are they going to get the energy from to put it in? Like, it's all mechanical. Like I said, there's no actual soul in the shit. There's no feeling in the shit. It's just, let's put these notes together. And this and, is what and sounds these, hot. And, and, the, and these artists, they don't really want to invest in real uh, music. Like, a lot of artists, they just go and get some YouTube beats. They're like, oh, let me look for, a, you know, a Kodak Black sounding beat or like, you know, what, you know whatever. 
and, and everyone is just looking for that same sound. So it's like, what, whatever happened to like having a unique sound and, and doing something new, bring something new. So like when I'm trying to make music, I'm just, I'm looking for like something that sounds new and something that sounds good to me, you know, and, and not just like, oh, I, I want to sound like that hot shit right there. You know, like, yeah. I want to sound like that song right there on the radio. Like, no, not really. Like, I want to make what I think sounds good. And if you guys dig it, cool, you know? I know. But if not, you know, no sweat off my back. I know y'all Y'all definitely did your thing, though, on this project, though. Y'all definitely did your thing. That. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Real talk, like, that, that means the world to us. That, that really means really the world does. to us. That's love, that, that kind of feedback, that kind of feedback is is part of why what keeps us going and part of why we do what we do. Uh, so really appreciate you, brother, for for telling us that. No doubt, no doubt. Now, uh, any closing words for your fans or any bit of advice, anything? How you want to close this out? Uh, yeah. So like, I I just want to let people know what we got coming up. Uh, skit. It is my main artist, uh, and we're really going to be pushing his solo album. And the features on his album are just going to be nuts. I can't wait for you guys to hear this track that we just started doing with Westside Boogie. So Westside Boogie heard our stuff, and he was really digging it. And so he, he was down to work with us. So we got a really hot drawing with him. And then... Um, yeah, man. So, like, first we're going to put out this RBX album. Look out for that within the next few months. And we already have, have a video for it. The first single is called Let's Ride. Uh, skits on there and clientele. And then uh, after that, we have a joint with, with uh, Rascast, RBX and Rascast. And that track is called Hibernation, which is the whole theme of the album. And we're going to shoot a video for that soon. And then, uh, yeah, man, and then after that, we're, uh, we're going to be focusing on wrapping up Skit's solo album, which is, is uh, yeah, that stuff is just, uh, it's going to be different. It's going to be, it's going to be, you want us to stay weird, it's, it's going to be some weird shit. It's going to be, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, but we, yeah, I'm really excited uh, about Skit's solo album, man. Like, I think. I think you guys are really gonna dig that, uh, and uh, yeah, man, Skit, let them know what's up, yeah, bro. But be before uh, my album uh, right now is like I said, RBX, like we said, RBX album. That's the big one. Uh, my album's more later down the line. Uh, so yeah, if if you are feeling the Torpor album for all y'all who are who are watching this shit right now, you you are feeling the Torpor album, obviously. So please uh, give that same uh, respect to a uh, RBX as you give it to Fatlip for hibernation shivers because really RBX is putting a, a lot of heart and soul into this shit um, more than we're used to. Let me put it like that. So, uh, uh, yeah, please uh, stay tapped in with us. We appreciate y'all real from, from the heart. We appreciate every, each and every one of you who rock with us. We really, really appreciate you. Uh, but stay tapped in. We're going to supply you with that good shit each and every time. All right. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. You heard it. Support real hip hop. You know what I'm saying? I'm on it. I encourage everybody else to get on it. Man, we got to build together. And that's what it's all about. Real talk. All right. I want to thank you, gentlemen, so much for your time. I want to stay tapped in with y'all. I want to continue to support y'all. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, and we're going to make it do what it do. Yeah, we appreciate you, bro. That means a lot to us. All right. Respect. All right. Thank you so much. Salute.